Hey, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in again. Uh, we've been steadily gaining more and more subscribers and it's been really fun talking with a lot of you and uh, you know, just talking arcades. So today I thought we'd kind of do a little tour of the basement. I think you've seen little corners, bits and pieces here and there. But yeah, let's walk through everything, see all the games. And uh, I think a lot of the upcoming content is gonna be me diving in and sort of fixing a lot of the games that have problems because as everybody knows, if you have a lot of arcade games, you've got a lot of problems. Um, there's only a few games down here that probably don't need any work. A couple of them are in the walkway when you come in right away, but I've got a lot of games like Rampage, which this one has never really worked that great since I got it, and it needs a, a lot of attention. So let's kind of walk through everything and, and uh, check out all the games. When you first come in, there is Joust, this Joust cocktail. Um, there were very few of these made. Uh, I really like it because it's got this sort of side-by-side -side setup where you can kind of sit down and play it. I, uh, I just kind of, I'm not a huge fan of cocktails, but uh, there's a few of them that kind of grow on me. And this was one that I always thought was a, was a unique one. Um, it is running a J-Rock. It does have all the original boards and all the original wiring. So if I wanted to, I could go back and switch it over very easily and just need to get the boards worked on. Um, but the J-Rock has been working great and you know as far as the people who come down here nobody can tell the difference so it's been very reliable since I put that in and uh, it's been great so behind that is uh, Demolition Derby uh, it's a four player there's not a lot of these either that I know of and it is probably the heaviest game I have ever moved it was a bear to get it down here I, uh, I drove all the way to Colorado to get this one, which is about 11, 12 hours one way. It's probably the furthest I've driven to get a game. Uh, I picked it up from Exidy. He uh, had it in one of his storage rooms down there, and he's got some amazing games there. It was really fun to check out. Uh, I had to get up on a ladder just to see across the storage room that he had all this stuff in. And, and so, uh, yeah, it was uh, fun getting this one running. Uh, he gave me, like, a board set and it wasn't running when we got it but uh, uh, I sent it out I think to CD Jump and he got me up and running and it works great I have never had any trouble with it it's uh, it's a fun game and the four player one is is definitely the the fun way to play it over here we got an Area 51 uh, I think I picked it up pretty cheap and it was just an Area 51 and I added the uh, Area 51 maximum force uh, combo pack thing to it and a power supply because these are real touchy about power and uh, it has been rock solid I don't think I've ever had to do a thing to it uh, kids love playing the gun games that one is one you couldn't escape in the arcade it was everywhere when it first came out yeah works great got nothing to do with that one over here we got Rampage and that one is definitely a different story uh, I think it worked for about a day when I first got it I had it shipped to me it's got the wrong joysticks. I've kind of started replacing, uh, putting one of the, I've got three Monroe joysticks and I just kind of stuck the one in there to see how it uh, went in and, and I haven't really gotten around to doing the rest of them. Uh, it worked great that first day, then the sound got really loud and then just died out. I've got different sound boards. It also does some weird glitch, but only when you walk to the left. So. We're gonna dive in and we're gonna get this one going because this was always a favorite one of mine in the arcades. Uh, I don't know, if you grew up in the 80s, this was one you were drawn to. You could get all your friends on it and, and uh, you know play, punch each other as monsters. So uh, definitely wanna get that one going. The kids liked it the day they got to play it, but since then it's just kind of been <laughs> sitting. So we're gonna dive into that one. Over here we got Super Sprint, which is a must-have, I think, in your arcade if you grew up in the 80s. Uh, it's a fun game for racing your friends. I like games that uh, let you kind of play against other people or play with other people. It's just more fun when you can kind of go up against someone other than a computer. Uh, but when I got this, it wasn't working. I sent the board out to a guy I know. He got it going, um, but still having problems. Only this player works. This one you could steer, but the, the foot pedals don't do anything. Uh, I thought it was just uh, the pots, but I replaced the pots and that wasn't it. So I think it might be on the board. Uh, we're going to take a look at that. And the monitor is a little bit dim. Let's see if we can do some these medium res monitors. I haven't worked on too many of those. So we're going to take a look at that, see if we can kind of brighten it up. 
Uh, it does have a problem when you first boot it up. Sometimes it boots up the garbage, but once it warms up, you flip it back off and on again, and it works like a champ. So uh, we'll definitely be taking a look at this one. I also have some art for the control panel here that I want to put on, but otherwise the rest of the art's pretty good. I would like to get some art for the side, but we'll see what happens with that. Behind me, you might notice a thief. Uh, this is not really a spot. This is actually kind of a walkway to get to the sort of the utility closet, but uh, thief, this stand upright thief, I think is gonna be going away. Um, I've got another uh, lead on a cocktail thief, which I've never seen before. And I wanna get that down here, but uh, we'll see, I don't know. Upright versus cocktail. Usually I end up liking the upright better, but uh, I don't know. So right now it's kind of in limbo and it's just in the way, but uh, we'll see what happens. And if we come around the corner here, uh, this is sort of the fighter row, uh, Karate Champ, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat. Um, the first game I ever bought, first upright, um, was this Street Fighter. And I have done absolutely nothing to it. And it's uh, never had any problems, uh, always works. It's been great. Um, so I do wanna, but I do wanna do some stuff to this. Uh, when I first got it, I, it's the Versus, Karate Champ Versus, and I never even knew that there was a straight up Karate Champ one player game. I always had the Versus game and that's all I ever played when I was in the arcade. So uh, I do want to get a PCB for the other Karate Champ just to play it because I never have. So probably we'll see a, a video on that, but we'll find out. Um, Street Fighter 2. I think when you kind of grow up in the arcades, you're either a Street Fighter or a Mortal Kombat player. Uh, I was a Street Fighter 2 player with my friends because we played it on the Nintendo. And we just, we were, we all had our own character. We played it all the time. So when I first started collecting, then I was like, I got to have a Street Fighter 2. That was just the one that we, uh, we all played. Uh, I've had very little trouble. This Dynamo cabinet's been good. This isn't the Street Fighter 2 bezel. This is Marvel vs. Capcom. I also have that uh, control panel and, and board set to put in here, but I never really put it in because uh, Street Fighter 2 is kind of a go-to, so I don't want to switch it out. But I could uh, clean this up a little bit too down here. This has got some holes where they had some uh, protection over the lock boxes and stuff. I could fix that up a little. Cosmetically, it could use a little bit, but it's low on the list of things because it works great. I put in new joysticks, new buttons, new control panel overlay when I first got it. So um, other than a few cosmetic things, this is a solid game. Uh, Mortal Kombat 2, this one always works good too. It does have, uh, there's like a little static line that kind of comes across the bottom every now and then, and it will reset once in a while, but for the most part, it seems like it plays really good. The monitor maybe could use a little work. It's a little washed out. Maybe it just needs a little adjustment, but uh, it plays good. So sometimes you just don't want to mess with stuff. When it works, it works. So, uh, but yeah, this one uh, plays great. And uh, it's, a, it's a classic. If you've got a fighter, this row has always got people in it. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's awesome to play. Right off the backside of the fighter row we have here, this is a Ivan Stewart's Off-Road. Uh, much like Championship Sprint, this is a three-player racing game. Uh, similar to that, it's just a fun game to race your friends. And, and uh, yeah, I could play this thing all day. It is one of my favorites too. So, of course, even though it's gigantic, uh, I definitely wanted to get it down here. Uh, I think ever since I've gotten this one, it's worked great. There's really not much that needs to be done. I think the, the nitro buttons could use a, a new spring. Some of them are kind of, they don't pop up. And then I'm missing one of my coin mechs down there. But other than that, just some very minor cosmetic things. Uh, it works great. And then you can hear hill climber over here, always making noise. I'm not sure if this is a game people are more familiar with, but it is, uh, it's kind of like, it reminds me of ice cold beer. It kicks out a, uh, a little pinball and you gotta try to get it all the way to the top, which is super hard. I've played it a ton and I'm not very good at it. I can get up there, but getting it back in that hole back here is, is very uh, difficult. Um, but it's a fun game and takes up not a lot of space. It's kind of a weird footprint. Um, I don't know, if I did have to get rid of a game, this might be 
one that I would get rid of. It's not something I ever played as a kid, but it's a unique game and it's fun to play. And if you turn off the back side of these games, we have sort of the crown jewel down here. Uh, this is the game sort of everybody comes to when we have a party down here. Um, a lot of times when you talk about uh, upright cabinets versus cocktail cabinets, upright cabinets are kind of the best, but this is one cocktail cabinet that I think you have to have. Uh, it is a four player track and field. And when you get people down here for a party, like this is where everybody stays. Um, you got a spot for your drink. Uh, there's lots of competition. You can always try to shave off a few seconds of your time. It's, it's an addictive game. This game, when I got it, was completely in pieces. Um, and so I kind of pieced it together. And I remember getting this like a couple days before a New Year's party that we were having. And the monitor was toast. And I went and found, I had another monitor and I did a cap kit in it and worked all night so that I could get this up and running before the party. And it was well worth it because this was the game that everybody stayed around all night. And uh, it was definitely the most fun. And right now I have hyper sports in here. Uh, I've got both the track and field board and the hypersports board. Um, I do have a switcher kit that I'd like to put in here, uh, but there's not a lot of room in this cabinet, so i got to figure out how I want to do that. And I have seen that uh, High Score Saves is making a kit for the hypersports uh, board that will play both uh, games. So that is something I might look into too. But I do want to make a new base for this. This one's made out of MDF and it just you know doesn't look as pretty. And uh, so if I made a new base for this, I kind of want to try to put like a pull-out drawer. Maybe I could have my other um, PCB down there. Um, yeah, I don't know. This one I'll definitely do a, a video on. So uh, yeah, check that one out. Uh, we'll head kind of around the corner here now. All right, this is sort of the back area of the basement arcade here. Uh, we've got a bunch of stuff down here. We've got the asteroids. Uh, which we have done a video on and did uh, a lot of work to this guy. It's got the Lunar Lander kit in it. And uh, yeah, love this game. Doesn't really need anything. Could use some stuff down here with the, uh, there's some tape over one of the coin rejects on that. I could probably do a little work on that. But other than that, this game uh, is rock solid. has been giving me no troubles. And then over here we have Omega Race. Uh, I grew up playing Omega Race. I grew up playing the cockpit version though at the pizza place and I have that very same cockpit in my garage and that will be hopefully a project we can get going. I'd love to replace this uh, upright with that cockpit even though it takes up more room it's just I mean that's the way I played it as a kid and that is kind of the way I want to be able to remember it. Um, but I love the art package on this upright as well. Uh, the only thing I need to do to this one is I need to put a coin door on it. Uh, this is the way it came when I got it, uh, but I love the look of these, and uh, yeah, I can play this game. I never get bored of this one. I, uh, I go back to it all the time. Tempest. It is one of the games I got in that uh, set uh, when I picked up trading for that case of beer, and uh, it has been a giant pain in the butt. Uh, <laughs> I worked with the board set, got it going. It went down, sent it out. They got it going. Uh, I went through the monitor. It's the first time I ever worked on a vector monitor. Went through it, uh, replaced everything, just gave it the whole treatment, plugged it in, and it worked. I was super psyched. I was like, this is awesome. And for about a month, it played great. Then I booted it up one day and it had like a vertical collapse. So I went in, tried to you know, check what was wrong. Nothing seemed wrong. I tried to, you know, adjust some things, maybe replace some stuff just in case. And then I booted up that it was worse. Every time I went to work on it, it just kept getting worse and worse. So it's down right now. I think I'm going to take this monitor and see if I can get someone else to work on it. Um, someone who is uh, a little more skilled in those. So I thought I had, you know, got it all going and I was super psyched about it. But yeah, now it's been it's been a, a different side of the story. So I didn't get much time down here, but uh, I love the game and I definitely want to have it. It is a beautiful looking game and it's fun to play. And over here we've got Mr. Do. Uh, this is a game I picked up from a friend of mine uh, and I put a switcher in here because I had Mr. Do, Mr. Do's castle. Um, I also have a ladybug board. I would love to get that uh, in here as well. But something was wrong with the switcher 
and it was making it look like I was having monitor issues and yeah, I had all kinds of trouble with this and the monitor still looks a little, it's got some noise. I don't know. I got to maybe do some work to that yet. And the control panel has got a little bit of a issue. I can't get it quite to tighten up enough. It's kind of got a bend in it. So I would love to get a universal joystick, but those are pretty much impossible to find. So I don't know. I need to do a little, little work to that, but Overall, the game works, and uh, I love these cabinets. They are so, I don't know, the art in the back here, I just uh, I really like the, the look of them. Before we continue down the row, uh, we'll turn around here. I've got this uh, skee ball machine and shuffle puck bowler. Um, pretty self-explanatory. They uh, both work good. Uh, don't really have anything I need to do. This one's got a little bit of a board coming off the front. I need to kind of get that fixed on there a little bit better. But uh, skee-ball, I don't even know how we got it in the basement. It is kind of ridiculous that we were able to get this down here, but uh, you gotta have skee-ball. So this is another one that everybody wants to come play. And uh, yeah, it just, you can't go wrong. I wanted to get an original skee-ball, but uh, those are pretty much impossible to find as well. And uh, now that this is in the basement, there is not a chance I'm ever gonna try to get it out of here. So this is the ski ball machine that lives down here. So uh, my children, I'm sorry. You're going to have to live with this because I don't think anybody will ever be able to get it out of the basement. Uh, the shuffle puck bowler, I picked this up a very long time ago. Uh, the scoring was wonky. There was all kinds of things. I had a guy come out and look at it. He basically like cleaned the contacts. And uh, once we got it in an area where the humidity was controlled and it wasn't like super damp, uh, now it plays like a champ. Don't have any problems. Uh, the only problem I've had with this was that it used to have a coin mech on it and I replaced it with a button to coin up because the coin mech would get jammed. This uh, silicone sand uh, would get down in there and it would jam the thing. So this game almost burned my house down just because we were playing, kids were playing it and uh, I didn't realize that that was jammed in and it started like just the coil was buzzing and it went up in flames and so I shut it off and we got it put out and I got parts to fix it but every time I plug it in it would the coil would just be engaged and it wasn't until I went and saw that the coin mech was wedged that I knew what was going on but uh, so yeah dangerous game uh, a lot of times I have it off if I'm not down here I'll leave this one off but uh, it's a fun game and uh, it's cool and it's heavy and big so I, I don't think I'm going to be taking this one out of here either but uh, it's, it's definitely an interesting game and if you look underneath it's like a pinball machine in the in the fact that there are just tons and tons of wires and relays and coils and it's kind of a amazing feat how this all works and doesn't uh, blow up when you turn it on. All right we're going to continue back down this row we're back over by the Mr. Do. Uh, we've got this uh, conglomeration here. It's a Taito cab that has uh, Jungle King mostly in it, um, but I have an elevator action control panel on it because uh, this board set has a multi-kit on it. It's original hardware, but uh, the multi-kit lets you play elevator action, Jungle King, Jungle Hunt, and a bunch of other ones. Um, when I was growing up, Elevator Action was the game that I played the heck out of, and so that's what I wanted. Um, so when I got this cab, I kind of did a half switch just so I could play it. I think this was an electric yo-yo. It's a uh, yellow. All the Tato colors um, kind of mean a different thing. So it wasn't a Jungle King originally anyway. Um, so I think I'm going to pull all this. Uh, I might send the bezel to uh, Overtime Arcade and... Uh, see if he can use it because um, once I switch this over to uh, Elevator Action I don't think I'll be going back. I enjoy Jungle King but uh, Elevator Action is kind of the game. So this cab needs a lot of work. Um, I got control panel overlay for this and I've got the bezel for Elevator Action. I think I have the marquee for Elevator Action so we'll be checking that out and switching it over. The monitor is out at the moment. I need to put a cap kit and a um, flyback in this. So we'll be getting around to doing that. This one is definitely one that'll be uh, probably first on the list because now that it's out, I can't play it. And it's one of my favorite games. So definitely gotta do that. Moving down, we've got uh, Badlands. And uh, as you can see, this one is completely down. 
This cabinet is absolute trash. It's falling apart. It's all nailed together. It's been like this since I got it. It is a fun game. It is very much like Championship Sprint, but you can shoot each other. So it's a, it's a cool game, and uh, the game works. I think the monitor is having issues, if I remember right. Um, but I had it all working, and I'm trying to switch over the foot pedals to Championship Sprint foot pedals as well, because uh, the Badlands pedals are these like gel-filled, strange pedals that go bad over time, and the ones I had were not working. So I'm trying to switch them over so I can use these foot pedals. Um, this needs a lot of work. Um, the cab, I have a cab up in the garage, a championship sprint cab that is, has someone had stripped. And so I'm going to fix up the cab and put that, this game in there. And uh, it was working, but the monitor's down now. So I've got a cap kit for the monitor and a flyback for that. So we'll go through and kind of redo the monitor and we'll get this all going because it's a fun game. I mean, it's, I think it's a little better than championship sprint because who doesn't want to shoot at your you know partner so and we're moving down to rock and rope here um, if you haven't had a chance I did a gameplay video on this I kind of talked about uh, how I played this game in the arcades as a kid and uh, it is uh, something you don't see very often but uh, I loved it so I wanted to make sure I had a dedicated cab for this when I started collecting um, I have the a track sounds on I don't know I haven't gone in to see if I can switch those off but I do have a uh, high score saves kit to put in here so I want to put that in because right now I have to coin it up. Um, and uh, yeah, so I got to, that's one small thing I got to do there. And then I also have a control panel overlay uh, that I need to do for this one. So I will probably do another video on that. Uh, if you move down here, we got uh, Tapper. Classic, you got to have that. Um, I've been trying to get a Tapper for a really long time. I had bits and pieces control panels and PCBs and old cabinets and you know just never never all the right stuff I ended up uh, getting a, a new scratch built cab for this and then I had all the parts to put onto it um, so it's all original parts even the bezel around here is the the glass with the mirror in it and you know just everything's everything's original except for the cabinet which you know looks perfect so uh, this is a fun game and uh, definitely one. I, I do need a cardboard bezel around the inside though. I'm noticing I can see into the cab. So I never did get the black plaster or the black bezel put in around there. But other than that, uh, this game needs nothing, works perfect, hasn't given me any trouble. So uh, gotta have Tapper, it's a classic. So here we got Ice Cold Beer. I know I say a lot of these were my favorites. Uh, this is actually one I never played as a kid. But uh, when I started playing it at the barcades, um, I was like, I got to get one of these. They're kind of like a pinball and an arcade crossed. Uh, you know, the, you can see the bar comes up and you got to try to get the ball in the illuminated hole. And uh, yeah, I can play this game over and over again. I never get tired of it. It is, uh, it is a fun game. It can be kind of frustrating. But uh, yeah, everything works on this. Uh, it's original. Uh, I don't have anything I really need to do to this. So uh, other than it doesn't have a lock, but... It uh, works great, and uh, yeah. So we come down to the end here again, and we've got uh, Atari Subs. It's a pretty rare game. You're not gonna see a lot of these. Uh, it's a two-player game, and uh, you are a submarine, and you are fighting against your counterpart over there on the other side to find them and sink them. Um, this game works great. Um, it is having some sound issues now. I think I gotta have the board checked out. Um, but otherwise everything's been working good on it. I'm missing a bezel, so I might try to do a little bit of work to cover that up on the other side so you don't notice the bezel as much. But uh, someday I'd love to find one, but I think it's going to be pretty much impossible. Um, but yeah, check out that video if you haven't seen it. Uh, and I want to probably do another video on this, just kind of doing some gameplay. I've had a few people ask me, so we'll probably uh, do a subs gameplay video one of these days. Um, right next to that, we've got Qbert. Uh, I think you can see what this needs. Uh, I've got a control panel. Uh, it must have been a Three Stooges or something. It's got the three controls. Um, and I kind of started welding them up, but I put all the stuff in to test it out and never kind of went back. So I've got to do a control panel overlay and finish this control panel. And then there's no uh, coin mechanisms in this one. 
So otherwise, the cabinet is good and the game plays great. I'm running a uh, J-Rock in this as well. Um, but uh, I've got the original boards, but I don't think I'll ever go back. It's got the knocker and everything in this one. It works solid. Um, yeah, so I think I'll stick with the, the J-Rock in here and, and uh, yeah, just fix those cosmetics and we'll be up and running. Um, over here, I've got a burger time. Right now, uh, the monitor is absolute trash in this thing. It looks okay once it warms up, but when you first start it up, it looks horrible. Uh, so the monitor needs to be gone through completely. Obviously, I've got a 60 in one here right now, but I have an original board set um, that I want to put in here. But yeah, definitely look for a video on this. We're going to get original hardware in here and maybe a switcher to put some other cool games in here too that you don't see all that often. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Right next to Burger Time, of course, we got our Paperboy. And this, uh, when I got it, the cabinet was pretty beat up. Uh, I did some new side art on it, and I, I went with the custom, you know, kind of fun side art um, rather than the standard Atari. Uh, as you can see, there is a spider in my behind my glass here. I definitely need to take and clean this monitor. But the game works great. I've never had any problems with it. I would like to replace the uh, fan in here. <laughs> It is super loud when you fire this thing up. It's like a jet taking off. So uh, I want to put a nice quiet fan in here and clean it up. But otherwise, the game works good. I don't think we'll be doing a video on, you know, cleaning spiders out of Paperboy. But um, yeah, definitely a fun game. I like games that have unique control panels, uh, stuff that, you know, you can't just do in MAME. Uh, Marble Madness, Paperboy, Tapper, you know, just things like that. The Lunar Lander, Thruster, all that stuff is, is kind of why you buy these arcade cabinets because you just can't play that in MAME. So this is definitely a fun game that you, uh, you can't really play any other way and get the same experience. We'll kind of flip back over to this side here and just kind of finish off this row. Um, down on the end here, I've got a Kix uh, trim line. Uh, I really love this little cabinet. The monitor that's in here is just beautiful. Um, when I got it, it, it had like a, somebody had gutted the control panel and put like a 60 in one, you know, in here. So it still has the 60 in one in it, but I got the original Kix control panel and put that on here for the trim line. I just need to do the art. And then I got to get rid of these player one and player two buttons. Unfortunately, they drilled them right into the front of the cabinet. It's the one thing that, you know, definitely kind of destroyed the cabinet in far as originality. But I'm hoping I could find a way to fill those and make it not so obvious. Um, and then get a J-Rock in here to play kicks because that is a, a game I love. And uh, yeah, I love having this little cabinet over here in the corner. It fits in perfect. Uh, right next to that, we've got the uh, Pac-Man Cabaret and it's got a multi-pack board in it so I can play all the different uh, Pac-Mans. And this, you know, too, great little monitor, great little cabinet, fits in the corner real nicely. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I dig it, so not much to say about it. Continuing on around, we kind of have the lounge area. We've got some couches and chairs and a coffee table. Uh, the coffee table here is actually a piece of the lane from the bowling alley in town that I sort of recycled into this little table. And uh, yeah, all this in here has got the, we got the old CRT. I've got the Nintendo and Super Nintendo and Atari and Coleco hooked up to that. Right now up on screen, we've got, uh, I think Mega Man 6. Um, huge fan of the Mega Man series. That was my jam back in the day. So I love to throw one of those in every now and then and just kind of go to town on that. But yeah, kind of got all the consoles in here for different plays. Like I said, I got the Atari, Coleco, NES, Super NES, Nintendo 64. I think I even got an Xbox on the end. Um, mostly Nintendo stuff down here, but um, got a few things. I think I have a PlayStation 3, but I don't know if it's out. Um, but yeah, got a TV there for movies and various other things I put on when the kids are down here. And then, of course, down on the far end there, we've got the Eerie Digger. This is probably the oldest game I have here. And... There's a lot of history for me on these. I can remember when these would come to town for the county fair, there'd be a big trailer and then all the way around would just be, you know, a bunch of these crane games side by side. And uh, 
uh, yeah, they were just the, the funnest thing. I'd save up my quarters and, and uh, you'd play them and they just had, you know, weird goofy stuff like handcuffs and knives and, and uh, lighters and things you could pull out of there. Um, very fun stuff. Uh, it, this is a very, uh, you know, deep memory of mine from my childhood. When I got older, uh, before I really started collecting arcade games, uh, I ran into someone online named James Roller, um, and he and his brother used to have a carnival that would go all over, and so now he restores diggers, and he's got all kinds of different ones, and I just kind of started a conversation with him, and, and, you know, about kind of his experiences, and just, you know, talking about the games, and, and never really thought about collecting them, but, um, you know, we just chatted about stuff like that, and he had a bunch of backgrounds that go behind these games um, that were original art that didn't exist anymore, no files for them anymore, and some of them were pretty damaged. And so uh, I worked in photography and did a lot of Photoshop work, so he would send me the full plywood backs of these with the art still stuck to it, and I would photograph it and reproduce it and fix any of the problems that it had and, and you know make it so that it looked like new again and then send him the digital files and the originals back. And then in trade, he would send me pieces, parts of an Eerie Digger to put together for myself. And uh, this machine here is all the parts. Um, I think he's still alive. He's quite old now, but uh, I still talk to him every now and then. Every so often I'll send him an email and just see how he's doing. And um, the guy's an amazing resource for anything to do with these eerie diggers or any of the diggers he's restored some amazing pieces of art uh that i i consider these diggers pieces of art and he's got some beautiful ones that uh are just i wish i could collect more of them but they are very expensive um but they're very cool and and that guy he does amazing work with them so that uh so this so this particular machine uh holds a lot of uh, emotional memories for me and, and uh, will always be a part of my collection no matter what. All right, we're working our way around and out of the lounge. On uh, this side, the first game on the wall we have is Robotron 2084. Uh, kind of fun history on this game. I actually won it in a raffle from Jen down in Florida. I uh, bought a couple tiles on a raffle they were doing and and uh, usually never win anything, but ended up getting this game. It's not running original boards, but um, plays great. Uh, cabinet's real reliable. Uh, haven't had to do a thing since I've got it. Uh, the controls are a little stiff, so I just need to play it a little more, I think, and get it loosened up. But other than that, I don't have anything to do to that. It's great. Uh, here you see a Stargate, the one we got from the big pickup of a bunch of games. And uh, we got it up and running. It is running a J-Rock in it, um, but it has all the original boards and everything in it. I just chose to go that route because uh, I knew, I didn't think I was going to actually keep it uh, Stargate anyway. Uh, I think I'm going to swap it out and make this into a Cloak and Dagger. Um, but yeah, I still got some things to do to it anyway. Uh, the control or the coin door on the bottom here is needs to be painted. It was pretty beat up and rusty, so I haven't uh, finished that yet. Uh, light out in the marquee here needs to be done. So I've got a few things to do, but you know, the game's working. I can play it. It kills my wrists after about a few minutes. Um, so like I said, I like Stargate, but I think I'll like Cloak and Dagger better. So I think you'll definitely see a video on this coming up. Um, and then over here we got Marble Madness. Uh, like I said, it's a, it's a unique control panel on this uh, for kind of a fun gameplay that you can't really get in MAME or any other way. Uh, i got a couple things I want to do to this. I've got some side art coming. Uh, right now it's just black on the sides. And I want to put uh, LEDs under the trackballs and illuminate those. And probably put a quieter fan in here. This is another game that has a super loud fan. But I uh, love this game. Definitely want to keep this down here. It's, uh, it's a nice addition. So, and then uh, finally over here we got the Turtles in Time cabinet. I did a video on this when I redid the uh, graphics package and kind of rebuilt it. 
It uh, has the switcher in it. It's got uh, Turtles, Turtles in Time, Simpsons, Cowboys of Moo Mesa, bunch of Konami boards in here. It's a, it's a fun game. Everybody loves to play this one, so it definitely gets a lot of traffic down here. All right, we're swinging around. This is sort of like Nintendo Row here. Um, the first game we got here is Popeye. Uh, when I was a kid, they had one at the pizza place, and I played the heck out of it, so it's got a lot of good memories for me. Um, some people don't like Popeye, but I, I think it's fun. This cabinet is, uh, when I got it, it was uh, Mario Brothers, and uh, the art was all ripped up on the side, so I got new Popeye art. I think I still have to do, there's one on this side that needs art yet, but um, you don't see it because it's up against there. So I haven't done it yet, but uh, the rest of it looks good. I don't think it really needs anything. I could take this bar off the front here, but um, everything seems to work pretty good. Monitor needs a little adjusting, um, but plays great. I've never had any trouble with it. Uh, solid cab. So here we got a Donkey Kong Jr. game. It uh, cabinet was pretty trashed when I got it. I ended up repainting it, doing a lot of work to it. But now it looks very nice. Uh, it's, you know, I always like these Nintendo cabs. They're pretty solid. They're little. You can move them around. They're not uh, a gigantic cabinet. But uh, yeah, I've got a double Donkey Kong board in this so I can play Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr. and Donkey Kong Remix and Donkey Kong Jr. Remix. Uh, they're fun levels that people created uh, using the original sprites. Uh, I love playing it. The board has some issues. It keeps going out of sync. But usually if you shut it off, turn it back on, it comes back into sync. I've adjusted it, messed with it beyond replaced pots, done a bunch of stuff. Still haven't figured out exactly what it is, but so that's something I need to work on. But otherwise, this is a fun cab that's got a lot of versatility in it. And last on the end here, we've got Mario Brothers. Uh, this is the wide body cab. You can tell it's got the speaker panel in the center here. Needs a new control panel overlay for sure. Uh, I have that, just haven't had a chance to do it yet. It's got some sprite issues. Um, I think I need to take a look at the board, see if I can get that fixed, but it plays good. Um, monitor might need a little adjusting and uh, somebody cut the heck out of the uh, coin door down here. So that needs a little work, but uh, mostly this is just cosmetic. So that should be a fun one to get going and hopefully not too difficult. All right, well, thanks for checking out the arcade here in the basement. There's a lot of things I want to do down here. Some stuff with the ceiling, some sound deadening up there. Um, want to finish out some of the walls and stuff too. We got projects up in the garage. Some of the games hopefully coming down here. It's not much room left down here, but there might be a few things that will move around. And we're going to have a lot of content from just the games down here that I need to get fixed and get running in better shape than they are right now. Um, so I'm looking forward to sharing that with you guys. So, uh, subscribe if you like this kind of content and we'll, uh, see you then.